Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages. Welcome to GBS Beginner English. I'm Jared, and I'm your host for our GBS Beginner English class. This is Lesson 16 out of Speak Now 3. We're going to talk about when did they release it. Now, you may be wondering, hmm, what are we going to talk about? Well, today we're going to talk a little bit about movies, and movies can be something fun and exciting. And when they came out. Now, that is sometimes very important to keep in mind when you're watching movies because what happens in some movies, they can become timeless. It doesn't matter when you watch them. You can watch them anytime, any place in history, and they're still relevant. And then there are other movies that you watch that they lose their relevance because things in them, they become dated. And become dated means that they're no longer part of our life. But we're going to go ahead and get into that and have some fun talking about when it was released. So let's get started, find out what we're going to do today. Today, we're going to start off with our weekly puzzle, and then we'll get into a student book. When did they release it? Uh, release or it? When did they release or it? Mm, sorry, typo there, but I'm just going to go ahead and go on and go on with release it. And then we're going to go with the workbook and, of course, the wrap up and the review. So today, when did they release it? We're gonna start off today with the weekly puzzle. Now this puzzle, this one is a little bit tricky, but when you sit down and think about it for a little while, there are a uh, very easy solution to this puzzle. Remember to try to figure this puzzle out because this will be a bonus question on this week's quiz. And um, it's not that hard to figure it out, but uh, there's a little bit of a trick to this one. Let's see what you can do about trying to find the way to solve it. Now, we move on, and today we're going to talk about different things that we come up with. Match the current events with its example. Now, some of this is a little bit out of data because it talks about you know, Barack Obama and the different things that happened earlier in the 21st century. They're not that far out of date yet, but they're starting to get dated. We need to get some more things that are closer dated to the 2020s. But we have political changes. We have royal weddings, celebrity scandals, natural disasters. These are all things that happen, and some people pay more attention to them than others. I personally, I follow political changes, natural disasters the most. Um, I really don't usually follow celebrity scandals. Currently, I am following a, a scandal, but it's because it's very interesting, the legal side of it. I'm not going to mention what it is here, but in class, I'll tell you a little bit more about it. But I do follow at least what's happening in that story because I do think it's very important with what's happening in the world. But I also have been watching a lot of videos lately about daring rescues. So find out what you can do. Match it with a title that best fits for the description there. Next, we're going to listen to a conversation about the Harry Potter films, and uh, we'll talk about it more on the other side. So let's take a listen. Lesson 16. When did they release it? Page 38. Conversation. A. Listen. When was the first Harry Potter film released? How many questions did Glenn get correct? I'm ready for Friday's current events quiz. So, let me quiz you. When did Spain beat the Netherlands at the World Cup Finals? That's easy. It was in 2012. Next question. Sorry, it was in 2010. Let's move on to entertainment. When was the first Harry Potter film released? I think the first one was in 2008. Actually, it was in 2001. You'd better start studying. Yeah, if you're going to take a quiz on something like that, you probably need to study a little bit more. Um, I remember the Harry Potter uh, movies coming out and that was because it was very disappointing for me. Now, many of you 
uh, maybe asking, teacher, teacher, why? The Harry Potter movies are great. Well, you have to understand, I fell in love with the books. I read the, the first four Harry Potter books when they first came out. Um, my friend introduced them to me at, just before book four came out. So book three, The Prisoner of Azkaban had come out and had been out for about a year. And The Goblet of Fire was going to be released later that year. And at that year, a friend of mine, teacher friend, introduced it to me. And I read through all three books and fell in love with them instantly. I introduced them to my mother and father and my brother, and they also fell in love with the books. Now, after that, uh, I read every book as it came out. I was there. I got the copy of the book at midnight. I read all of them, not once, not twice, multiple times. And I listened to the audiobooks, and I love the audiobooks. The problem I have with the movies, the movies are very dark. They lose some of the humor that J.K. Rowling wrote into the stories. But that's my own personal belief. If you like the Harry Potter movies, then I'm all for you. I'm, I'm glad. I hope you enjoy them. They're not for me. They're not something that I find particularly enjoying. So moving on, get a chance. There are four sentences here that you could probably go back and add to this conversation to make it a little bit more understanding a little bit clearer see what you can do about putting them into the right places now knowing when a movie comes out or when the world cup happened this is trivia and trivia is a good thing to know and we will be doing a trivia game in class later this week It'll be something fun something special i hope you're ready and excited for it now asking when things happen we're asking for when an event happened now don't be afraid to say, I don't know. You may say, but teacher, I should know the answer to all these questions. Well, hopefully you do. There is nothing wrong, though, with saying, I don't know. Because when you don't know the answer, I don't know is the first time, the first thing you can say that will help you to get the right answer. There's no shame in not knowing something, but the only shame is pretending you know something when you don't know it. So if you don't know it, that's okay. Ask for some help. Now, Walter is uh, a contestant on a game show. Look at the possible answers and think what would be the best answer to give. Now, some of these um, are definitely correct and some of them are not. So when you listen to what Walter has to do, mark down what you think the correct answer is. Now, I'd like you to pause the video now, look at the questions and try first. Guess what you think the, the answers were. Now, special hint, number two, everyone in the class should get number two right. If you don't, I will be very, very disappointed. <laughs> Okay, so that's things. Listen, pause the video here, try to answer the questions as best you can. Then when you've answered the questions, then restart the video and see what you can fix and see which ones there are. So let's listen and find out the answers. And welcome back to As Luck Would Have It. If you're just joining us, we're here with Walter. Walter is only five questions away from a million dollars. Walter, you can walk away at any time if you don't like the question. Answer all six and you receive one million dollars. Ready to keep playing? Yes, let's hear the next question. All right. When did the Titanic sink? I just need the year. April 15th, 1912. And you are correct. I'll read the next question. Who hosted the Olympics in 1988? Let's see. 
It's either Spain or South Korea. I think Spain was after Korea. I remember the Olympics were in Barcelona in 1992. Yes, that's right. So my answer is South Korea. You're not sounding so confident, Walter. No, I'm sure. South Korea. Yes. For this next question, I'll need a date. A month, a day, and a year. Okay? When did man first land on the moon? I know it was in July 1969. You need a day, huh? I'm afraid so. Let me remind you that you have right now $250,000. If you answer this, you will have half a million dollars. I'm pretty sure I know this. I remember I got up and watched it with my parents because it was an important day in history. Take your time. It was the 20th. That's it. July 20th, 1969. Yes? Yes! Congratulations, Walter! We're almost out of time. Let's go to our final question. Ready? In what decade did the first 3D movie come out? 3D movies are very popular today, but when was the first one? Audience, no help, please. I remember seeing lots of black and white photos of people in the 1950s with glasses on watching movies. I'm pretty sure it was the 1950s. This is for a million dollars. If you are wrong, you go home with nothing. I'm going for it. I'm going to say the 1950s. The answer is... The 1920s. Oh, Walter, I'm so sorry. The first 3D movie was in 1922, and it was called The Power of Love. I hope you've enjoyed being a contestant on As Luck Would Have It, Walter. Walter? Walter? Poor Walter. Walked away from half a million dollars. No. End of CD one. Now, with uh, with this, there's a couple of follow up questions to go with this. Now, the, we know when the Titanic sunk. Titanic sunk on the April fifteenth. But when did it strike the iceberg? Hmm. Who's toast to the Olympics in 1988? Of course, you should all know that one. But the question is, what city was it in? That one should be easy, too. Along with question number three, the first man landing on the moon. Now, we all know that the first man landing on the moon and walking on the moon was Neil Armstrong. And his famous things, that's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind as he stepped off the, land, the pad and landed on the moon. But now here's the bonus question for this one. And hint, hint, you may see this one on the, uh, on the follow-up. On your quiz, who were the two men that traveled with Neil Armstrong? You probably will know the second man on the moon because they're usually put together as Neil Armstrong and... <laughs> uh, well, but who was the man that stayed in the command module orbiting the moon, who didn't get a chance to go down to the moon, but he stayed and orbited the moon. They're all part of the first mission, and if you uh, get to know a little bit about history, you should know the three men who made the first trip to the moon. Also, um, there, they were actually not the first trip to the moon. What was the first trip to the moon? It wasn't landing on the moon first one landing on the moon was july 20th 1969 but the first manned trip to the moon might look be surprised that one came much earlier 
And the last one, in what decade did the movie 3D movies come out? Now, 3D movies, the way that 3D movies work is that they project two images on the screen at one time. And in modern movies, what they do is they give you two filtered uh, lenses. Now, you may say filtered lenses. When they first came out in the 1920s, they couldn't filter it very well, so they printed the film in two different colors. And that's what progressed through to the 1950s, is that they would progress a black film, a green film, and a red film all at the same time. So if you watched without the glasses, it would hurt your eyes. But when you watch the, with the green and the red filtered over your eyes, your one eye would see the black and white and the the uh, the red because the red the green light was being filtered out by the green, and the other eye would see the black and white and the red because the green was filtering out, and that's what caused your brain to put the picture together as three D. Now, old three D movies they weren't very believable. But movies through the 21st century, starting with the movie Avatar, really start to set, set up more of what a 3D movie can be because they use polarized lenses. Now, what polarized means is as light comes to your eyes, uh, we can see light in two different waves. Uh, usually they move in a very erratic pattern, but what polarized lenses do is they filter out half of the light now what they do with the lenses now is the left the one eye filters out vertical lines and the other one filters out horizontal and the result is your brain puts the two pictures oh they're the same place at the same time it's an optical illusion uh next time you see a 3d movie take the glasses and put them together and then slide the lenses around if you notice they'll start to black each other out. And that's because they're canceling all light coming through. Fun things. All right, moving on. All right. Now, when you have special events, big things that happen, World Cup or uh, the Olympics or a big event in politics, in your lifetimes, there have been several big events that have happened that probably are not necessarily popular, but they're also rememberable in your lifetime. Since I've lived here in Korea, there are three events that have happened since I've lived in Korea that I would say are incredibly important. Number one was the sinking of the Chonan. This was the Korean battleship that was sunk by a torpedo by North Korea that uh, sunk the Korean battleship called the Chonan. I remember when that happened. I was remembering that because it happened on my birthday. And that's a hint on when my birthday is. And it was this semester. Mm. Anyway, the second one that happened, the sinking of the Seawall. And this was another event, very big event that happened tragically a few years ago. And uh, it's really, really sad to think that so many people died because of people who were bad. But this is another event that happened within your lifetime that sometime in the future, people will say, oh, where were you when this happened? And the last one, a uh, big event here in Korea, when uh, the protests happened to help remove Park Geun-hye from presidency, it was unprecedented. Uh, the Korean people showed what a political protest should be. It was peaceful. It was a demonstration of a million plus people every weekend. And you should be very proud of the protest that was done because it didn't turn violent. There were a few violent people, but those few violent people could probably be counted on two hands. The people who went up there, they protested. They protested in a legal and very nonviolent way. And they showed this is what you do when you're upset with your government and unfortunately not everybody follows what did but you be, should be very proud <coughs> of those events but these are three events that i know have happened within your lifetime 
in my lifetime, there have been many more events that have happened. In my father's lifetime, oh, so many more. Um, I'm not old enough to remember the moon landings, but I am old enough to have attended Star Wars when it was released. Now, I don't remember it because my mom told me I was a very tiny baby. I was only about three months old at the time, but it, I was there. Didn't remember the movie. Didn't know it until many years later, but I was there. Now, let's go on to everybody's favorite. Yes. Let's look at the vocabulary for our workbook. All right. Now, natural disasters. Putting some things that can be considered a natural disaster. There's a lot of different ones. Earthquakes, tsunamis, tidal waves, tornadoes, storms. Um, one of the things that happens, storms, as you may, may not know, storms get named. Uh, in the Pacific Ocean, we have typhoons. And when a typhoon is particularly large or devastating, that typhoon's name gets removed permanently from the rotation list. Other typhoons later on will go back through the typhoon name list. And there is a name list. It's an official list. You can look it up online. And they have the same thing for hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean and cyclones in the Indian Ocean. Now, these three storms... You may say cyclones, typhoons, and hurricanes. That's a lot of storms to remember. They're actually the same storm, same type of storm, just in what ocean they formed. Hurricanes are in the Atlantic Ocean. They start off the coast of Africa, and between Africa and the North America, they build up and they uh, crash into North America. Typhoons build up in the Pacific Ocean. They come in and they crash into uh, mostly the uh, Philippine, Indonesian, uh, East and uh, Far East countries of Asia. Cyclones, cyclones form in the Indian Ocean and generally crash into places like India, Madagascar, and the coasts of Africa and the Middle East. So where they form goes. See if you can figure out some different natural or uh, things that can come into these categories. All right, now use the topic from part one and write some questions and complete the answers. All right, now what makes something news? News is whatever we make. Now, uh, I've talked about it in class before is that most of the time, the news that we pay attention to is negative news. Positive news is not always greatly looked upon. Sad because positive news is something we really need more of, but we do look more on negative news. So let's take a listen to this. What makes something news? Journalism in all forms, print, broadcast, and digital, is about reporting the news. But just what makes something newsworthy? How do editors decide what stories to feature? What makes one story more newsy than others? Media professionals use the following criteria to judge stories' value. Time. News is just that. What's new? Something that happened is going to be more exciting news than something that happened last week. Location. People are very, in, in, very much more interested in news that happens in their area. Local stories about the school fire may come before news of the tsunami thousands of miles away. Impact. A story is bigger in news if it affects more people. A train crash that kills hundreds may be more important than a plane crash that kills a dozen, dozen is 12 or so. Prominence. If the, the people involved in the story are famous, even something small can be news. Everyone trips sometimes, but when a president's tripping, might be national news. Uh, in the 1970s, Jimmy Carter was famous for it and always tripping on something. Whether he was coming downstairs or going up the stairs, he ended up tripping down many different things. Conflict. 
Uh, if a story involves a disagreement between two or more parties, it's interesting. That's why politics gets so much coverage. So these are some things that make news newsworthy. Now you can also look at the internet and it's what people are caring about, what people want to know more about. That's what ends up on the news. So uh, some news, I told you that there's celebrity news going on right now. This is one of the things, if you go to YouTube or something like that, you'll see what the new the celebrity news that's going on right now and why it's so big. So eh, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. But we all need to follow the news. I actually recommend watching the news every day so that you at least know what's happening in the world. You don't have to read or watch all the news. But know what's happening. Okay, go back, find out uh, the criterion that would summarize these different stories and why it would be important. Now, I want you to think of stories and news that happens around you. What's some recent news stories that you can think of? Which criteria do they meet? Think about things that happen in your area, close to you, or even around school. Write a, a summary of a recent news report and then make sure that they meet the criteria from above. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for today. We talked about our weekly puzzle. Remember, go try to figure that one out. You can need to give the answer as a bonus question. And uh, there were a couple of other bonus questions that I dropped in. Mm, hint, hint. There's some extra bonus points to be available this quiz. Go back, figure them out. We talked about when did they release it? Release it. Okay, sorry, bad typo. When did they release it? We talked about the workbook and we wrapped it up at the end. Ladies and gentlemen, you're doing a great and wonderful job. I hope that you're having fun, and I will see you for a review three, a review four, and wrap up the semester. Until that time, ladies and gentlemen, have a great and wonderful time. Bye-bye.